very exciting to be involved in the Dance Science Festival because it brings together two aspects that I think really complement each other very well. So today's panel will showcase the relationship of um, the, the practice of dance, but also the scientific research that's been done around dance for practice and classes. So first of all, we have joining us from New York, uh, David Leventhal, who's the program director and founding teacher for Dance for BD. He leads classes for people with Parkinson's disease around the world and trains um, many other teachers to teach dance for BD approach. In addition to his artistry as a dancer, a teacher, and an innovator, his generosity in sharing his knowledge is very inspiring. So we have David with us here today. Uh, it's great to be with you all. Uh, and thank you for the kind introduction. It's great to be with you all. I wish I were there in person, but thanks to the magic of technology, uh, you can see me. I can't see all of you, but I'm going to assume that there are some people in the room. Yay! We have a nice group of people here. Good. Well, thanks, and thanks again for the intro. So, David, would you be willing to tell us a little bit about the, the background of the Dance for Beauty program and how you see research evolving internationally? Sure, it's so interesting to us because when we started, I think science was probably the last thing from our minds in terms of how the program originated. We were approached by a local community group called the Brooklyn Parkinson Group, which until 2001 had been offering a monthly support group. And at that time, the founder of the group, a woman named Oli Westheimer, had been thinking a lot about ways to get her that the members of her group to connect in a different way um, and to connect outside of the Parkinson's sphere. I think she was aware that people were spending a lot of time thinking about and talking about Parkinson's and she wanted to figure out a way that they could um, explore their humanity outside of the chronic condition that they were living with. Um, and Oli has a dance background and she started thinking about not just the social elements of a dance class, which of course are recognizable to anyone who's, who's been in any, any kind of movement class, uh, but, but also the, the sort of um, physical and strategic elements of that class. What do dancers do to uh, practice, learn, and execute conscious controlled movement that in many cases is quite complicated? Um, and she thought that there was something in that if we put professional dancers in a room with people with Parkinson's, that there would be some kind of interesting exchange. I don't think she had any sense that <laughs> this hunch that she had would grow exponentially into an international network of classes that are based on a similar model. But the reason I mention this is that in the early days, Oli really didn't want us to read the scientific papers on Parkinson's. She didn't want us to approach the class as therapists as um, clinicians, because we were. We were, John Higginbotham and I who started the class, and Misty Owens, who came on shortly after, were all trained dancers and, and professional dancers and teachers who had um, specific strengths in different areas of dance, but very little knowledge about the scientific workings of the brain, um, very little knowledge about sort of physical therapy or anything related to what people with Parkinson's had been accustomed to in their, in their therapeutic experience. So we treated it very much as a dance class, as an artistic experience, as a way for people to um, approach movement with the mind of a dancer. And we still very much stick to that, although there's a lot more focus now on uh, the research component, which I'm happy about. to other international programs? Sure, well, uh, I don't know if we did the first research, but I will say that we started doing a very informal research and evaluation project around 2006, and Oli Westheimer was very interested in getting some of the, the feedback from the participants and, and filtering that feedback through a quality of life filters and figuring out what elements of the class impacted participants' quality of life. Um, so we started in that, in that area, and I think uh, she really was just interested in how, how this kind of artistic experience 
was, uh, was influential in, in how people felt about themselves. Um, and that is a degree of science, as I know you'll hear from Sarah Houston uh, very shortly. That's a very important element of this program. We really need to figure out a way to let the research meet the dance and not change the dance to adapt to the research. Um, that's, that's important because, as Gertrude Stein said, we need to understand football in a football way. Um, we need to understand dance in a dance way. So dance is not a science, it's an art form. But as with many art forms, there's a lot of neuroscience embedded in dance practice, uh, uh, the process of learning dance, the process of executing dance. And so there's a lot, I think, that scientists can learn from what goes on in the dance class, but only if, only if the, the, the process of learning dance and the art form itself stay pure in a way. Um, and I think through all of the incredible work that, that you have done, that other people in the network have done, the program has remained very much in the world of dance, which is perfect, I think, for scientists to come and study it, because um, it really gives people a window into what happens in, in dance and, and what it is that dancers do that relates to neuroscience, relates to neurology in the case of Parkinson's. So we started with quality of life, and I think that's a, that's a huge area of interest because Parkinson's is a quality of life disorder. It's not just a movement disorder. And the way that it impacts people at all area, in all areas of their life, at all levels of their life, their relationships, their expressive abilities, their emotions. Um, think about what it would feel like for you to, to not be able to move and do things in the way that you once were able to do. Um, and to feel a certain way in social situations. I mean, there's a lot of sort of that um, awkwardness and stigmatization, I think, that people feel. So, so quality of life is a huge issue. But, of course, we also are responsible as, a, as dancers, as teachers, as advocates for this program to translate what we do to the medical professions. Uh, because we know that, in the long run, they are our best advocates in many ways. Um, they have the closest contact with patients. Their referrals have a lot of strength and power. And so if we can create language that neurologists and other medical professionals will understand, then um, we've crossed a bridge that I think is very important to the sustained importance of uh, artistic interventions for folks with Parkinson's and a whole range of other conditions, as well as everyone living without a chronic condition. So um, in recent years, I think there's been a bit more focus on uh, what I would call basic science in terms of looking at um, what is, how does the class impact functional mobility? Uh, how does the class or this program impact brain activity? So there's a whole set of research, um, the center which at the moment is at York University in Toronto that is looking at fMRI images of uh, dance for Parkinson's students learning dance material and what happens over the course of 12 weeks in, in their brains that allows them to learn this material um, in spite of some pretty significant motor challenges. Um, so uh, brain scan, the focus on brain scans are focused on sort of motor aspects based on UPDRS, which is the um, Unified Parkinson's Disease Rating Scale, which is sort of the standard test that a neurologist would use in the office and using that as a as a basis for investigating uh, what happens in the class. And we're also seeing studies that combine several of these elements. And, and Sarah will talk to you about her research, which is a mixed methods approach, which I think is incredibly smart for this kind of project um, because Parkinson's is a mixed methods condition. So to, to use both sort of quality, qualitative aspects of journaling, um, video study, interviews, along with the kind of measures that a phys physiotherapist would use. And looking at that as a whole picture is, a, is a, a great way to go. We're seeing more of those studies, I think, because people are realizing that we have to approach dance uh, from a multifaceted scientific perspective, because dance is a multifaceted art form.